Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Today I want to talk about a very important topic and that is creating a website backup. And this is specifically for Divi. We're going to talk about creating a full website backup with your hosting provider, with a plugin, and also look at some individual Divi related features that you can use to create backups right directly in Divi. All right, let's get started. As always with any of my tutorials, I have the link in the description down below if you're watching this on YouTube. So I always have a blog post and that usually has a code snippet. Now in this tutorial, I don't have any code snippets, but a lot of times every week here on YouTube and on our blog, I release a Divi related tutorial. Most of the time I have, I have code snippets, fun stuff. But today we're talking about something rather important and that is backups. Now, if you're not creating backups, this is the tutorial for you. Now, if, if you already are, if you're already familiar with it, you, you might learn something, um, but mostly um, this is for people who are just not familiar with backups or maybe they want to see my take on it or you know that kind of thing. All right, let's get started here. So let's just start with the very basics. You know, what is a backup? So a backup is a copy of your live website and it's, it's taken at a specific moment in time. And a lot of times we'll call it a snapshot. And, you know, I kind of like that terminology. Think of when you're taking a photo and, and then maybe you look at it later or something and you're like, you just see how everything was frozen in time and exactly that second when the snapshot was taken. And that's kind of the idea of where that terminology comes from for creating a backup. So it takes, the website as it is at that time and you know saves it saves a copy of it all right so what is included in a backup well it would consist of everything the i mean usually you can you can choose um but in general if it's a full backup it would be all of the files so that would be like all of the html and css and javascript and php everything that makes up the website, including, you know, photos and any kind of things like that. And it would also include the database. Um, so it's pretty much just everything. Now there are ways that you can, you know, just choose certain things and there's a time and place for that. But that's, that's really what's included in a backup. So you may be saying, well, what is, what is the backup used for? Well, in general, it's kind of like insurance. You know, having it there in case something goes wrong, um, there's a number of things that could happen. If your website would get hacked, you know, you have malware, um, you could use a backup to go back in time before that happened and restore it. Maybe you're just, you just want to update your theme or, you know, some plugins or play around with some code. And you, it's a little iffy, you know, you're modifying some PHP or something like that. And it's just, it's just a good idea to have a backup. So it's, it's a way of, you know, like I said, insurance. Um, you can actually use a backup for a number of things. You could actually use it like if you're migrating a site, although I do recommend just using a dedicated migration plugin. But um, if you wanted to like copy the site, you essentially would be taking a backup and then, you know, importing it into the other site. That would be kind of one thing. Um, I've already done it if if I worked on a website and I got it to a point where it was done, it was completely finished. I've created a backup at that point um, just to save to my computer. And, you know, if anything would happen or, or let's say like a client was you know, messing around and broke the site, deleted stuff. It's kind of just one of those things where, where um, you have it, right? And it's like, yeah, it's a good idea. So that brings me to when would you take a backup? And I kind of already touched on that, but. In general, backups, you know, a lot of the, the solutions like in your hosting account, they would be daily. Now, that varies. You know, you could take one every hour or every seven days or, you know, different hosting companies have different backup, you know, frequency like that. But um, that would be considered automatic backups. Now, if we're talking about manual backups, like one that you take, you know, on purpose, right? It's like... That would be like if right before you're ready to do something major on your site, like if you're going to update a theme that's really old and, or you know 
it's going to be problems. You've seen other people talking about problems with this update, so you're very cautious and you want to just have that, yeah, you, know, you want to have that peace of mind that you could fall back on that. Um, that would be a good time to take a backup. And then like I was saying, like when you finish a site, and maybe maybe you want to do that like me and just like just take one, you know, everything's pretty much done and it's going live and you don't foresee a lot of changes. That's a good time to take one. So then, you know, why is it so important? And I've kind of touched on all of this as I've been talking here. I guess I kind of hope that it's obvious why a backup is so important. Um, if you like, you know, stress and panic and lots of hassle and a lot of extra time working on site, then backups are not for you. <laughs> um, I'm only kidding. Um, keeping regular backups, like I said, it was like insurance, but you know, it's just always there. It, you don't want to have to rebuild your site or even just redo things that you've done. If there was something, you know, you had malware like three days ago and you had a backup from 10 days ago, you might want to restore. You know, you don't have to worry. You can just restore and um, find the problem, you know, that led to the malware. But I'm just saying, um, why is it so important? Well, there's a lot of peace of mind that comes from having it. I know that when I create a backup, sometimes I just like breathe a sigh of relief, like, you know, I have it, I have it saved here, you know, now when I go, you know, try this crazy code that I'm working on, or you know what I mean, whatever it is, you you just feel good about it. Um, I've taken backups already, and they have really saved the day. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too many stories right now, but I have greatly benefited from backups. Let's just put it that way. Um, a lot of things can happen if you're updating or adding code and or like the whole security thing. Um, but yeah, take a backup. Now, you may be saying, well, how do I create a backup? There's several ways. Now, if you've watched my video on staging, you'll know that I'm pretty dogmatic about having good hosting. Um, the easiest way to create a backup is with your hosting provider. You know, they're gonna have some kind of automation. I know like in, in my SiteGround account, it just automatically creates a daily backup and keeps it for 30 days. So when I go in there, I can see the last 30 days of backup each day. You know, that's, talk about easy, like you don't even have to do anything. It's already set up. You, you create a website and it automatically does it. Now you can create manual ones as well, but I'm just saying that's convenient. Same goes with my Cloudways account. Um, my website here has is hosted on Cloudways, and I have it set up. I forget exactly my frequency, but um, it's automatic. So I say here, all good hosting companies have a backup feature, and you could argue this, but notice the keyword good hosting company. Um, all good hosting companies have a backup feature built in. If your hosting company does not, yeah, you might wanna run. You might want to get a, a real host. And I say that, and people probably hate me for saying that, but it's it's unfortunately um, the truth. And yeah, there's a lot of bad hosts out there. Anyway, so go ahead, get familiar with with the backup feature in your hosting account. Log in, you know, if you need help, check out their documentation, ask for support, whatever. Um, in general, it's gonna be pretty simple, honestly. This is actually a really simple feature. It's usually just like take a backup now and then you click a button and it does its thing and then it saves it and then you can click restore. Really simple. Um, I don't need to walk you through it. Here I have some instructions like if you were using SiteGround. In fact, I'll just show you. Go over here. Um, it's actually under the security tab of all things. Um, backups right there. Really simple. I can click um, create a backup. Now all these backups here were already created you know, automatically. But if I was to create a backup, I could just write a name here and click create and it would be done. And then if I wanted to restore one, I could go here and click restore all files and databases. And just like that, it would restore it really easy. Now the same would apply to other hosting companies. Like here I have an example of Cloudways and you just log in. Now with Cloudways, you have servers where you, you, you know, you kind of like own that server, but also applications, which are websites on that server. So you have to remember, you have to first go to um, the backups tab 
in your server. And here you can choose, you know, a schedule, you know, how frequent the backup happens um, and how long you keep them, you know, up to four weeks. You know, frequency can be one hour to seven days. So it's really nice. You get all these settings and then you go to the actual application and click on the backup and restore. And here it's very simple. Restore or yeah, take backup now. It'll just take a backup and then restore application. You can choose uh, which one. Very simple. And with those, be sure to check out their documentation guides and all that. And whatever you know, hosting company you use, it'll be pretty similar to that. Now another method is using a plugin. If you were to go, you know, into your dashboard, click on add new, you know, looking for a plugin and you search for backup, you're going to get a lot of results, a lot of results. And I'm just telling you, there's going to be so many plugins. The first one will probably be Updraft Plus. That is a very popular one and I have used that. It, it is very good. Um, even when you install their plugin, it kind of walks you through. It's kind of neat. Um, so, but in general, it's going to be very simple. I'll just show you my screenshots here. You're going to just find the backup button, you know, blue backup button. It's going to give you a little confirmation and you click backup and it does its thing. And there it is. It adds it to a list and then you can restore, you know, if you need. And, um, I like to download a copy of the, you know, the database, the plugins, themes, uploads, that kind of thing. Um, save that but you yeah, have very easy to use plugin and you know all the other ones are just very similar uh, let's talk about Divi specific backups and this may be something you hadn't really considered um, but I've actually used some of these we'll talk about it um, the theme options theme customizer settings the, the theme builder templates page layouts, the Divi library layouts, and then we'll talk about the media library. That's not specific to Divi, but anyway, the theme builder, you know, go here. If you're in your dashboard, go to Divi theme options. And right up here in the top, you see these up and down portability icon, click that. And right there's an export. You can create an export, click this button. It saves it as a file. Same thing can be said for the customizer, which who's using that? I'm not. Um, the customizer is a thing of the past. So anytime you're viewing your site, you can click on theme customizer or access it from the back end also, but you'll see this up and down portability icon thing here. And then it's the same kind of box. You can export, um, the customizer settings. And then here's the one that I use and I have been very thankful that I've used this. Let's go here to the Divi theme builder. Now, Actually, under each of these templates, there's this the up and down arrow here. I could export like an individual template. Um, you can totally do that, but you know, in general, you probably want to do them all at once. Up here in the right hand corner, click that, and it's going to automatically have export all templates. Um, but I have used this, and this has come in so handy. I wish there was an automated feature built into Divi for this, but back when they were having a bug with this, when I was losing my theme builder templates, like I have probably like 40 of them on, on our site here. Um, I thankfully had a backup. I, I just can't tell you how thankful I was to have that. I actually had it in my staging site. I lost my templates on my live site and people couldn't even buy my products and stuff. It was really bad. Thankfully, I had a backup, which I could have restored and I could have restored the full backup and then exported the theme builder templates. But what I actually did was I had a staging site that I'd just taken previously to that and I exported the theme builder templates from there. So there you go. That's a good one. Um, the other option is like if you want to actually export the page, um, you could go to your page. Um, and load that and then down at the bottom you'll have your page settings click on that icon same exact thing you can export your entire layout so maybe you spent some time creating a really nice layout or you know your site's done and you just want to create a backup and of course you could use it on another site as well same thing for the library you know these are kind of repetitive um, but the Divi library same exact thing import and export here they have the button rather than the icon but there you go same exact thing. Um, 
the last thing here is not specific to Divi, just WordPress. If you want to back up all of your images and files that are in the, the media library, you know, right here. Oh, I have one. Um, there's no, like, option here, you know, up and down error, you know, nothing like that. Um, but what you, you would want to do is go into your hosting provider and look for your file manager or maybe if you have cPanel or, um, yeah, FTP. Or you could even install a file manager plugin. So basically what you want to do is find the public HTML and then WP content slash uploads, right? So you want to find that uploads folder. It's going to be in WP content. So the uploads is where, you know, when you upload media files and images. So there what you can do is click on that folder and it will compress it or maybe there's even an option to um, compress it or save that and then you can save it to your computer and there you have a backup of just the media so that's really handy so I know that's a lot and again it's not my regular like tutorial for doing fun things with code and Divi um, but it is important and we're actually you know adding this to our series we're creating a series on like how to properly update Divi um, the staging site and um, a couple of different ones, how to roll back, how to use the chain, change log, like what does the change log mean? Um, a couple of those coming up. So we're creating a whole series of, you know, how to properly update Divi. Um, we even had one on how to disable automatic updates, which is a good thing, <laughs> a very good thing to do. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this specifically about updates. And if you learned something or thought of something in this video that you didn't know, give me a thumbs up. That'd be cool. Um, maybe I missed something. You can leave a comment to let others know. Um, but otherwise, you know, be sure you're subscribed here because this is what you get. Um, usually not this kind of video. Usually it's more of a tutorial like I've been saying. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, you know, check them out and uh, follow along. All right. Well, we'll see you all in our next video.